And, and so we began to pray. And, and we prayed right there in our bedroom. And we began to, to worship God for a vision that had been given. And there are moments in which a vision is, is not evident before your eyes. There's moments, and I'll speak about this this morning, where you've got to have faith to see something that you can't see with your physical eyes. Some of you are facing this right now because in your life, God's stirring you with dreams that are his dreams. He's been hovering over your life. He's been watching over these dreams. He knows why he made you in your mother's womb. God is all over these dreams, and there are times in which we can be disappointed or discouraged, and so many walk away from their dreams. I'll speak to that in just a moment as well. But we sent out two teams to the Washington, D.C. area that were scout out the land teams. We were spying out the land. And when we came with the, uh, the first time, the team was really just Lisa and myself. The second time, we had a missions team with us. But when we came across the bridge, I was a little concerned about whether or not Lisa would want to live in Washington, D.C. and the area here. And uh, because Tulsa is so easy. Can you say amen? amen. The traffic, the, the shops are all in one place. And, and you don't get constant tickets due to meter mates. And so, so it's just very easy. And, and so when we were going over the bridge into Washington, D.C., Lisa looked at me and she said, I feel like we're coming home. And I knew that God was doing something and confirming something. And, and the second time that we came, uh, we, we had a team with us. And we went into the inner city and we did evangelism in the, in, in the inner city. And, and, and uh, we would uh, pass out clothes and, and, and food and other things. And it was a wonderful time with that first team. And we told them that they were pioneers, that they may not be a part of the work that would be done uh, uh, by those who would actually live here, but that they would believe in something that would happen in later years. There would be a gathering of people that would be called to Washington, D.C. So they were ec ecstatic about that. We would walk around the White House and we would stand there at, at the gate of the White House and, and I had an imprint on my face of the bars of the White House because I wanted to get as close as I could to pray over the president and, and over his cabinet and over those that would work there. And we prayed, God, open these gates. I sound like Ronald Reagan. Oh, God, <laughs> tear down this wall, you know. And, and, uh, and, and, but, but God opened these gates so that we can, we can literally affect the lives of those that work here for you. Give us spiritual influence. I don't know how, but, but God do it. I remember that we stood with that team on a terrace at the Willard Hotel. How many of you know the Willard Hotel? A lot of history there. And we stood on a terrace there, and we could look over the entire city. And for a couple of hours, we just prayed that heaven would come down to earth. That God would grab a hold of our nation's capital and, and really turn the nation's capital upside down for him and just pour out his spirit upon our leaders and upon the Pentagon and all of this. We had no idea what would be happening just a few months later. We came on September 1, 2001 as a family. Our three little girls uh, transitioned well. If that didn't happen, it would have been tough, but they transitioned well. But all of you know what happened a few days later September 1, we moved into our home. On September 11, we, we had somebody knocking at our door. Lisa and I came to the door, and, and he said, you've got to turn on your TV set. Airplanes are going into buildings. And we said, well, well, the cable guy hasn't even come yet. We can't even watch TV yet. He said, well, turn on the radio. So we were listening to what was happening on 9-11. We didn't see the images of airplanes going into buildings for probably a week. We got on our vehicle and went to a meeting that had, had been called uh, by David Barton, a meeting of pastors from around the nation that would come together to pray for our nation. And we came to the center of the city <coughs> to pray. We were actually right near the Capitol in a hotel uh, lobby. And we uh, were 20 strong, even though 120 pastors were supposed to be there. The events of the day held them back. When we were heading into the city to go to this meeting, we saw the Pentagon on fire. We were one of the only vehicles going into the city while everybody else was trying to evacuate the city. We were the Oklahoma plates that were going into the city. <laughs> I looked and saw that there was a military, uh, somebody in the military that was standing there taking up one of the lines of traffic as we were going into the city. And he had the largest uh, Uzi looking rifle that I had ever seen. And he was standing there to, in so many words, say, 
that the Pentagon is secure now. When we went into the city, we saw that there were military Hummers on different corners, and we met together with this group, and we walked together with the group over to the Capitol, and we watched as the leaders of our nation were singing, God Bless America. Any of you remember that? Our leaders singing, God Bless America? You remember that? They were singing there. We were just a, uh, not many feet away from them, and, and we knew that God had brought us for such a time as this. There was no way that we could have known what would have happened in history. But we were obedient to come out and simply to make the step to say, God, you've got to show us what this ministry means. We've come out here on newsletter support. You've got to show us what this means. Here we are standing just a few feet away from our leaders, and we are praying God's protection over them. We stood there with the, 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 the ones that were the police officers, and we prayed over them. And when we turned around, I said to Lisa, I said, there's a hole in the heart of our nation that only God can heal. And we need to be a part of God's healing of our nation. I don't know how, but this has happened, and we need to be a part of this. Then as we were walking back to the hotel where the pastors had gathered, I looked up and I saw a sign that said, For Lease. And it was the Bank of America building that was two stories high on the corner of 2nd and Pennsylvania Southeast. It's nestled in between the Library of Congress buildings. And, and many of you know the site because it's as close as you can get to the Capitol building without being um, in a government building. And, and we saw that for lease sign and we went in there on September 12, 2001 with our cell phone and began to make phone calls to see if there would be those who would support us being there as a prayer center to pray for our leaders and to start Bible studies. And within that afternoon of two hours of phone calls, we had raised enough money for one year's Lease, which as you know, that's prime real estate and that's a, a lot of money for two hours. But there were pastors that were friends of ours that got, went before their congregations and said, we need to believe in the Shulers and we need to believe in this ministry and we need to believe that, that there are, are contacts there to make a difference. James Robison, some of you know the minister, James Robison called me and said, Bill, uh, we want to send out you know, $5,000. There's more that we can send. What can we do to help the Pentagon? But really, the help was needed more so in New York City uh, as far as, as financial help. We began to get uh, schools to draw pictures, and we brought those, those pictures for the rescue and relief workers at the Pentagon so that their tents were lined with, with uh, scriptures and with, with prayers and of encouragement. These were days that many of us remember, and some of us just feel like, you know, uh, that's a distant memory now. But out of that time... We saw the beginnings of something, and we knew that God was moving. So we started in the prayer center. Now we have a prayer center on the corner of 2nd and Pennsylvania, and we began to pray for our leaders, but we didn't know any. So what do you do when you don't know any leaders? The only leader we knew was Steve Largent, Seattle Seahawks, congressman from Tulsa, Oklahoma at the time, who was running for governor. And because he was running for governor in Oklahoma, uh, he left about uh, maybe a week before we arrived or a week after we arrived. So there goes our one friend. He's back now. 